you and life be a landlord. Uh, I am Hella Chaz uh, on Twitch at Hella Chaz and also YouTube at Hella Chaz. Uh, you can also find me on Reddit and Discord. Uh, this is an advanced guide uh, generally for players who are experienced with Black Be a Landlord um, and are roughly familiar with uh, the, the symbols and what the texts are on the various symbols. Um, so in sort of the background that uh, motivated me to uh, create this deck, um, I was uh, uh, watching uh, Fakie play on his Twitch channel. Uh, he picks Goose like it's a great common symbol. Um, and I rarely pick Goose, uh, but it's clearly better than one. Uh, the 1% chance to drop a golden egg, which is worth three, um, sorry, which gives three, is, is clearly worth something. Um, but I'm not exactly sure what. Uh, so uh, knowing the Goose value makes it uh, easy to play in the future. Uh, so uh, let, let's get to the fundamentals of Luck Be a Landlord. Uh, this is the most important slide in this deck. Uh, this is an uh, image created by Fakie. Uh, you can uh, see his Twitch channel on the uh, bottom left corner. And uh, this is approximately the uh, coin gain per spin uh, necessary to beat the rent curve. This is the rent curve. Um, now, if you notice the difference between the uh, red and blue lines, the rent curve has been increased between Content Update 2 and Content Update 4. Um, and it's probably, if I had to guess, it's going to drop a little bit in Content Update 5, uh, which drops in approximately 8 hours at the time of recording. Uh, but uh, it, the... Uh, 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 key key details here um, are approximately the uh, amount of uh, uh, coins gained per spin and also coins gained per symbol. Uh, since there's 20 symbols on the board, uh, a, uh, uh, a, a spin of 60 would average uh, 3 uh, per symbol. Uh, a spin of 20 would average 1 per symbol. Uh, and so the value of the golden egg is proportional to the average return on the board. Um, the golden egg is presumably, if it drops early, providing surplus value over the average board uh, that we would otherwise have available. Once the board averages 3 per symbol, the golden egg is no longer value. This happens on spin 60. Um, once again, referring to the most important slide in the deck. Um, I'm, I'm rounding a little because 60 is a nice number. Um, the immediate takeaway here is that spin 1 goose is better than spin 10 goose. Um, because the, uh, the difference in average value if the goose was to drop an egg on spin 1 is a lot greater than on spin 10, and also it has a, a larger number of turns uh, to convey value. Uh, so let's actually get into the maths, and this is a really hardcore slide, so I'll try to go uh, a little bit slowly. Um, so first things that I'm assuming, I'm assuming a, lin uh, a linear rent ramp, uh, and a board exactly at the rent curve. Uh, now I'm going to go back to the most important slide here um, and explain these sorts of assumptions. Uh, so uh, the rent curve being linear is clearly not quite linear, but linear is not an unreasonable uh, approximation of what this rent curve is doing. Um, and also, um, generally speaking, uh, I've uh, looked at a, lar a large number of my own games and games of other people and how their uh, pay, uh, how their uh, uh, how their coin gain per spin is relating to the rent curve. It's a little bit ahead, um, but also on the other hand, there is uh, coins gaining uh, from say peppers, uh, from egg carton, from fish tank uh, that are coming from off of the board. Um, and so when there is a uh, amount of coin gain per spin, it's not necessarily all coming from the board. Um, so when we say board is exactly at rent curve, there there's some reasons for that to be higher and lower, and I'm approximately canceling them out. Uh, and having a linear rent curve is uh, a, a simplification. So uh, when we have egg at spin one, uh, what is the value of dropping a golden egg on the first spin? Um, so I have approximated it to uh, 0 0.5 times 3, which is the value of the egg, uh, times 60, uh, which is the number of spins. Uh, the likelihood of this happening, assuming that we have a goose on spin 1, is 1%. Uh, 
Uh, now, where's the 0 0.5 coming from? Uh, so I have approximated uh, the value here. The surplus value uh, is approximately a triangle, uh, which is half of the uh, rectangle here. So we take the area of the rectangle and then we divide it uh, in half or otherwise uh, multiply it by 0 0.5. Now let, let's take something from the um, uh, a middling situation, egg at spin 30. So in the same way, uh, the, uh, the surplus value here, uh, if it's at spin 30, which is halfway to spin 60, is um, one and a half. Uh, the board is averaging one and a half and the egg is giving one and a half above uh, that value. And we're getting that value for approximately 30 turns, uh, 30 spins, uh, and in order to uh, make it the triangle, we multiply by one half. Uh, the likelihood here uh, is not really 1%, it's more closer to 24%. Um, the reason why is because when the goose is off of the board, it has a 0% chance to drop an egg. Uh, now, this can be manipulated. Um, uh, for example, uh, Fakey uh, currently, uh, as of his last video circa two days ago uh, that he broadcasted on Twitch, um, preferred uh, somewhere around 20 symbols, maybe a little bit lower, especially on earlier turns. I personally prefer around 20 to 25 symbols. I do not appreciate having empties in my deck at all times, but if I had to err on in one direction or another, I'd prefer to be in the 20 to 22 range rather than the 25 to 26 range. Um, if you'll see other top players like Tetra, Tetra would probably prefer a little bit higher, even though 20 to 25 is also very ideal. Um, so I, I've, I've made a small correction here to 0 0.8. Um, in other situations, this could be closer to 0 0.9. I've just put 0 0.8 because it's a perfectly fine assumption. Um, and then, uh, so uh, if we generalize this formula to be egg at spin n, um, this, is, uh, this is a simplified formula, uh, but it's approximately um, one half uh, times uh, three minus 0 0.05 times n, and then times 60 minus n, that's the turns remaining, and then times uh, 0 0.008, uh, which is the uh, value per individual spin. Um, this is uh, not a particularly digestible formula, but that is the generalized formula uh, for uh, how this comes out. Uh, and so I take this formula and uh, I, I put it into a program. I, I ran this on an online uh, compiler in Python. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to go and explain this, but this is the program. Um, you can pause, you can uh, type this in yourself, you can get the same results. Uh, the output here is, uh, it, it starts at 0 0.72, um, and then we uh, sum the entire series over all 60 spins, and we get the uh, total surplus value to be about 15. Uh, I, I'm, I'm taking that 14.76 and I'm saying it's 15. Um, and uh, roughly the uh, each individual number is the value to uh, like subtract uh, for how late the goose is being picked. So if, say, the goose is being picked on, say, uh, spin 5, then subtract 3.3 .3 from 15, you know, or subtract 3 from 15 because you we're human. Um, so really the surplus value when, when picked on spin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would be closer to 12. Um, so let's let's try this uh, in in English. So we have a goose. Um, we have a goose in the game for about sixty spins, and then we remove the goose uh, to keep uh, golden eggs from producing at below. Uh, if, if the goose is producing golden eggs and its value uh, is dragging down the value of the board, on one hand this is good because we've made it this far into uh, the game, and on the other hand, uh, come on, man, we need to not have this goose around dumping golden eggs on our board. Uh, so Goose is around for 60 spins. It's producing about 15 in surplus value. Uh, Goose is best case five over four. Uh, that's the simplification there. Um, it quickly approaches one as the game continues. Um, uh, e each spin later that the Goose is being picked, uh, the value of the Goose is diminishing. Um, so now, uh, given that Goose is best case five, five, four, uh, I definitely think that this is pickable before the first rent payment. Uh, generally speaking, if I have an option to pick up a 5-4, uh, 
uh, absent other better options, a 5-4 is a good thing to pick up. However, Goose declines below 5-4 uh, fairly quickly. Uh, refer here uh, to see how it's declining. Uh, in, in my opinion, this is pretty, uh, Goose is uh, fairly unpickable after the second rent payment and sort of between the first and second rent payments, I'm really hoping that there are things other than Goose to pick up instead. Uh, so, uh, that, this, is, this is roughly my takeaway uh, from the Goose uh, mathematics, uh, the, the Goose calculations that uh, I have done. Um, I, I'm very okay with picking up Goose before the first rent payment. After the first rent payment, if Goose is the best thing uh, available in the draft, I'm either complaining or skipping or doing some combination of both. Um, so I hope you uh, very much enjoyed uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, hopefully you learned something from it. I learned a lot from it uh, doing these calculations and finding out how good Goose actually was. Uh, so uh, feel free to... Uh, uh, like, follow, subscribe, either on YouTube or Twitch, either one, whichever one you happen to be watching on at the moment, or just do both. Um, and uh, feel free to hit me up on in, in the comments, uh, on Reddit or on Discord. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.